the title of this uh, exhibition is Messengers from the Mantle. And these messengers are things like diamonds, but also rocks like mantle xenoliths that come up from great depth. Now, what are xenoliths? Xenoliths are, um, the actual definition for xenolith comes from the Greek, which is um, xeno means foreign and lith means stone. So it means a foreign stone. And typically it's a rock that's brought up in a magma from either from the mantle or from the crust and that's brought up to the surface or to near the surface. And um, mantle xenoliths, rocks that are actually from the upper mantle, are one of the most common types of rocks found in kimberlites. The vast majority of mantle xenoliths that are brought up in kimberlites and even all other type, types of, uh, of magmas that bring mantle rocks to the surface is a rock type called peridotite. Peridotite is by far the most common rock type in the Earth's mantle and it makes up by far the greatest number of, uh, of mantle xenoliths that are brought up to the Earth's surface. So peridotite xenoliths that come up in kimberlites are a little bit different from those that occur in, in most other rocks. Um, there's a couple things about them. One, they tend to be bigger. Uh, peridotite xenoliths in kimberlites can be up to a, a meter in size, um, although that's, that's extraordinarily large, um, and they can be hundreds of kilograms. Um, the other thing about them that's quite unusual is that they are often very, very rounded. In fact, here we have a sample of a peridotite xenolith, and you'll see that it has a, it's actually been cut in half, but you can see that it's got this, um, what we call a discoidal shape. It looks like, almost like a, a rock from a river, and that's because it has actually experienced mechanical abrasion, much like a river cobble would, because it's been brought up in the kimberlite at such high speed that it's actually been abraded and rounded through the action of being brought up in the kimberlite at probably hundreds of meters per second as it get, got close to the surface. So you might ask, why are these peridotite xenoliths interesting or useful scientifically? Well, it turns out that they are interesting and useful in a, for a variety of reasons. The first thing is that they represent part of the uh, of the continents that is totally inaccessible otherwise. On the continents, really, except for these rare, very rare um, tectonically exposed peridotites, um, the only way that we can get actual samples of the, uh, of the mantle portion of the continent is by looking at these xenoliths. Okay, so peridotite, most importantly, is dominated by the mineral olivine. And it's not coincidental that we use the, the, the rock name peridotite to describe these rocks because the, the gem peridot is actually the gem form of the mineral olivine. So when you think of peridotite, think of peridot and think of an olivine dominated rock. Now most of most peridotites are fairly coarse grained and unlike most igneous rocks on the Earth's surface, they lack feldspar. In detail, the mineralogy <clears throat> and composition of mantle xenoliths also vary with the age and type of lithosphere that they're from. If you look at a sample of the oldest part of the continental lithosphere, the, the, the cretonic lithosphere that's of Archean age, it's older than 2.5 billion years, it's gonna be very different in its, um, the proportions of minerals that are present and also in its bulk chemical composition than a piece of, of a mantle xenolith from a, a young continental area. And the last thing that, that is really special about peridotite xenoliths that come up in kimberlites, and especially those that come up from, from the cratons, is that they show evidence of extremely high degrees of partial melting. They've had something on the order of typically 30 to 40 percent partial melting. That may not sound like much, but that's far, far higher than any amount of melting that goes on in the Earth today. And it gives us a clue to processes in the early Earth, in the Archean, that say that mantle temperatures were probably higher back then, and that the whole thermal state of the Earth might have been significantly different than the way it is. And finally, um, many of these xenoliths preserve information for interaction, um, recent interaction, often possibly related to the, to the host magma that brought it to the surface, of addition of new minerals into the, um, into the peridotite rock that were not there before. And this is the process called metasomatism which is the addition of a new chemical um, component to a rock delivered either by a melt or a fluid.